are picking up in 5.5 where we left off. Um, I believe we right at the end of class got B multiplied out mm -hmm. in this class at least. Yeah. Okay. So um, again, that was revenue is price times demand. In this case, they were both binomials, so we were just boiling. And that's all we had to do there. Okay. So yesterday we added and subtracted. We multiplied. Now we're ready to divide. Okay. So we have some examples here. In example A, F is defined to be X minus 7. G is defined to be 2X squared minus 13X minus 7. They ask us to perform the function operation F divided by G and find the domain of the result. So um, you could see this written as a couple of different ways when we talk about division. F over G of X. You could just like what they ask down here in B. You could just see F over G. Just kind of depends. You could also see it written as F of X divided by G of X. All of them are going to have the same idea. So if we're doing F divided by G, we should set up F of X divided by G of X, which F of X is X minus 7 divided by G of X, which is 2X squared minus 13X minus 7. Okay, now with dividing, okay, usually we talk about dividing in this situation. It more comes down to can anything factor and cancel, okay? That's more usually the idea. And if you remember when it comes down to canceling, remember, do I get to cancel these sevens? No, because they're not factors. We can't cancel individual terms. You have to cancel factors, okay? So you can't cancel pieces that are added and subtracted together. So with that in mind, your numerator of x minus 7 is just x minus 7. That's not going to factor. 2x squared minus 13x minus 7. Is that going to factor? Possibly. Probably in this situation. How's that for a valid answer? Um, and so how do we factor something like 2x squared minus 13x minus 7? What do you say? Slip and slide. Product of AC. Because there is an A value here, yes? And I did not really leave a good spot to talk about this. So I guess I'm going to squeeze it in over here. 2x squared minus 13x minus 7. Are we going to slip and slide it or proactive AC it? Proactive AC. Slip and slide. I'll try and do a little bit of both, I guess. Either way, you kind of get the same information. Slip and slide people, slide your 2 over, right? Slide the 2 over, start multiply that. You'll have x squared minus 13x minus 14. Factor. Okay, I'll catch up with you in a moment. Proactive AC. What do we need a product of? Negative, negative 14, 2 times negative 7, and a sum of negative 13. Slip inside people, you need the same numbers. What multiplies to be negative 14 and adds to be negative 13? Are you there? It's got to be 14 and 1. If it multiplies to be negative, one's positive, one's negative. If it adds to be negative, larger number's negative. So, proct of AC people, you're taking the negative 14 and 1, and you're splitting it. Which way do you want to split this? You want to go minus 14x plus 1x minus 7? I don't know. Okay. Slip inside. If you slipped your slid your two over, you're factoring that, right? Slip inside people, you're factoring that into two parentheses. Okay. Okay. Proactive AC people, do you know what you're doing? 
four terms, split it in half. What's the GCF of the first half? 2x. Factor it out. 2x squared divided by 2x is x. Minus 14x divided by 2x is 7. GCF of the second half? Just 1. Now, do you need to write that 1? Yes. So there's a 1. When you factor out a 1, this is still just x minus 7. But does it give me my matching parentheses? Yeah. We get x plus 7 as the match. 2x plus 1 as the others. Okay? If you... Let me finish up using slip and slide, people. If you slid your 2 over and factor, now what do you have to do? You have to divide that 2 back out, right? On this first one, 14 divided by 2, that divides nicely. 1 divided by 2 doesn't divide, so what happens? The 2 goes back out front. You got one way or the other under your belt? Because here's what I'm thinking. If I put this in the notes, what are you probably going to see in homework? You're probably going to see something where you have to use product of AC or slip inside. So this is your review, right? Okay, this is your review. Okay, so right here we have x minus 7 over x minus 7 times 2x plus 1. What happens? X minus 7 cancels, yes? So in terms of a final answer, gosh darn it, I did, didn't I? Okay, let's get this straight. X minus 7 does cancel with X minus 7. Thank you. What remains is my answer here. Okay, if everything cancels on top, by default that leaves a 1. We have 2x plus 1 on bottom. Okay, that is your answer to the division problem. Okay, that is your answer to the division problem. Now, what's the other thing we're asked to do? Find the domain. Yesterday we did a whole lot of all real numbers, didn't we? What's different about today? Do we have denominators? What do we know about denominators? Okay, denominators can never equal zero. So, this is just like when we did excluded values, if you recall that. Okay, it's that same idea of you need to look at anything that would make this original denominator equal to zero, and you need to exclude those. Okay, in this case, I don't want to set 2x squared minus 13x minus 7 equal to zero because I don't want to, that's a mess. But what did we have here? We had it factored into two factors. So we're going to set both factors equal to zero. And I, yes, I say both factors, just like excluded values. X minus 7 was in that denominator before I canceled it, wasn't it? So that could be a problem. So, let's see, if we add 7, x is not going to be able to equal 7, yes? And subtract 1 and divide by 2, x cannot equal negative 1 half. How do I state my domain then? It's, it's still, what was our answer yesterday? All real numbers, except x cannot equal, or except x equals 7 and negative 1 half. Okay, so domain, you guys know, will probably be multiple choice. But you'll have an answer to pick all real numbers except x equals 7 and negative 1 half. Okay? So remember, denominators cannot equal 0. Watch for that. Beware. 
Mostly it's going to happen in the division. Not going to see much in the addition, subtraction, multiplication. I'm not saying you couldn't, though. Okay. Okay. One more practice here. Perform the operation and find the domain for f over g for each pair of functions. Notice it is f over g, right? So if we set this up here, what are we putting? x squared minus 3x minus 18 over x plus 3. What are you doing right now? Are we factoring so we can hopefully cancel? No guarantee that things cancel, but expect it. Okay, be surprised if it doesn't. So x squared minus 3x minus 18. Good news, there's no a value, right? A is just 1. So factor like normal, x squared breaks into x and x. What did you say? Negative 6 plus 3 multiplies to be negative 18, adds to be negative 3. Over x plus 3. Ah, does something cancel? Okay. x plus 3 cancels with x plus 3. What's my answer? X minus, x minus 6, right? It's on top. You could say x minus 6 over 1. I wouldn't count you wrong on that. Savas probably would. But all you need to say is x minus 6. Let's see. Did they ask for domain? Yes. We're doing domain also. Okay. Thoughts on the domain? All real numbers besides positive 6. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's not just about what's the answer. It's about the denominator, whichever denominator you want to look at. So you're looking at x plus 3 there. That cannot equal 0. So all real numbers except x equals negative 3. And again, that right there is because x plus 3. Set your denominators equal to 0. I didn't actually write that one out. I assumed we could do that math. And b. Again, we're asked to find what? f divided by g. So this time it is x minus 3 over x squared minus x minus 6. And we're all looking at our paper and working, which means what are you probably doing? You're probably factoring. x minus 3 stays x minus 3. Okay, x minus 3, x plus 2. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And if you get stuck and you're having problems figuring out what how it factors, use the top factor as a hint. There's probably going to be a match of x minus 3. So is one of your factors probably going to be negative 3? It's a safe bet. So if x minus 3s cancel, how did you express your answer? Okay, x plus 2 is in the denominator. So 1 over x plus 2. And domain. What you got? Okay. I think I heard all the pieces out there. All real numbers. Except x equals... 3 and negative 2. You said both, yes? 
because it doesn't matter that x minus 3 canceled. It was in the denominator at one point or another. So you're setting both of those equal to 0. And we're getting positive 3 and negative 2. And by all means, if you need to write that in, x minus 3 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, do it, right? Okay, guys. We've added, subtracted, multiplied, divided. That leaves us with function composition, which I can guarantee you saw a little bit of in Algebra 1. I can guarantee you probably didn't like it in Algebra 1. Okay, so um, function composition. Okay, this is where we are putting two functions together, not through adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, but we're putting one function within another. Okay, so when we talk about this, we're given an f, we're given a g. You guys realize f and g don't always stay the same as whatever they provide you in that problem. But when we're looking at function compositions, it's doing something like f of g, in this case it says of 3, f of g of x, g of f of x. Okay, so we're plugging one piece into another piece. I'm trying to remember how I like to teach this best. Always start on the inside. Okay, do anything on the inside that you can. My inside here is g of 3. I guess I should probably start with do we remember what g of 3 means? Yeah, you're going to take, if it's g of x equals x plus 1, g of 3 means x gets replaced with 3. Every place you see an x, you put in a 3, yes? Now, keep in mind that g of x is going to be needed elsewhere, so I probably need to. So right here where it says g of 3, instead of doing x plus 1, that's going to be doing 3 plus 1, yes? Tough math. What is 3 plus 1? Four. Now, is that all we had to do? No, that was the insides. We just looked at g of 3. What's still hanging around out here we haven't talked about? f of 4. So now, how do I do f of 4? Take 4 and put it into f, yes? What's my f rule say? It says to do x squared. So that means every place I see an x, I'm going to put in 4. So it's going to be doing 4 squared. And what is 4 squared? 16. Okay. If your insides is a number, your answer will be a number. Okay, you're taking that number, plugging it into whichever function it tells you to. Questions on that one? Now, the other alternative, I think you'll probably get to a point where you like plugging the numbers in better. Once we understand, you know, get used to the flow. The other alternative is where they don't put a number in. It's just f of g of x. Okay, and so again, I'm going to start on the inside. What is my inside here? G of x, which is x plus 1. I don't have a number to put in this time, do I? So I'm just going to rewrite g of x as x plus 1, because that's what the definition is. Now, I'm not done. It didn't just ask me to write g of x, did it? What did it ask me to do? It's asked me to do f of x plus 1. So what we're basically going to do is we're going to take g of x, what's inside, and we're going to plug it into f. So like earlier over here, we got to a point where we plugged 4 into f. I'm not plugging 4 into f. I'm plugging x plus 1 into f. So every place I see an x, I'm going to replace it with x plus 1. Now, when we look at f, what does f tell us to do? It says, us, it says to do x squared. What is my x? 
x plus 1. So we're going to plug x plus 1 in here. And so now, since it was f of x plus 1, we took the x and replaced it with x plus 1. So instead of having x squared, I have x plus 1 squared. I do not have this as my final answer on my answer key. I had to check. Which means, what should we do? Multiply it out, boil it out. So remember, x plus 1 squared means x plus 1 times x plus 1, if you need that visual, yes. When we FOIL that out, x times x is x squared. Outsides, x times 1 is 1x. Insides, 1x. 1x and 1x is 2x. And then last, 1 times 1 is 1. So x squared plus 2x plus 1. Those are ones I don't think you'll like quite as well. I, I know, they're, they're not as fun. Once you get used to them, they're good, okay? It just takes a bit. I'll be honest, this is something my pre-calc and calc kids struggle with at times, too. Every time I reintroduce it. Although by the time we get to calc, it's a necessary. They have to know how to do this. So, okay. Now, what's C have us do? We're going to do the opposite. This is saying g of f of x. This is saying we're taking whatever f is and plugging it into g. So what is f? x squared. So I'm going to write that is x squared. What do we still have hanging around out here? So it's g of x squared. So I'm going to look at G. At every place I see an X, I'm going to put in X squared. So what is G supposed to be? X plus 1. So it's supposed to be something plus 1. What's my something I'm plugging in? X squared. What is x squared plus 1? It's just x squared plus 1. Okay, so we took f and plugged it into g. I took the x squared and I put it in place of the x. Okay, now we're going to change f and g up. Let's see if we truly understand what we're doing here. Okay, this is something that always takes a little bit. It always takes a little bit. So I'm going to keep explaining everyone. I'm going to annoy some of you, but that's all right. I'm trying to make sure everyone gets this before we leave. Okay. Try and work the problem ahead of me. Okay. G of f of 2. This one we have a number, yes? Always start on the inside. What's f of 2 telling you to do? We're going to put 2 into f. Every place you see that variable, we're going to put it in. So f tells me to do 2 times something minus 1. What's the something I'm putting in? 2. 2 times 2 minus 1? 3, yes? Yes. So that right there is f of 2. Now what? Okay. I wouldn't say multiply by 3x exactly. No. If it's g of 3, what do we do with this 3 here? We plug it in. Okay. So if g... G of X is supposed to be 3 times something. It's supposed to be 3X, so it's 3 times something. What am I putting in place of the X? The 3. What is 3 times 3? 9. Okay. 
Okay. Now we get to do it without a number. F of G of X. Start on the inside. What is G of X? Three X. So I'm going to take G of X and I'm going to plug it in to F. What's the rule for F? 2X minus 1. So that means 2 times something minus 1. Are you with me? 2 times something minus 1. What's my something this time? The 3X. 2 times 3x minus 1. 2 times 3x is 6x minus 1. And 6x minus 1 is 6x minus 1. You're plugging the name under the x. Like 3x is You're multiplying it by 2. Since it says 2x, it's 2 times the 3x I'm plugging it. Kind of okay? Yeah. I, 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 this is a work. I get it. This takes time. Okay? I've taught this many times. It never goes over exactly right at the beginning. It takes practice. Okay. G of f of x. Are you trying it? And some of you are bored and saying, I got this. This is a piece of cake. Great. The rest of us, let's keep working. f of x is 2x minus 1. That's my insides, right? Did you beat me to the answer? Maybe. We're going to take that inside and plug it into g. So I'm taking 2x minus 1 and plugging into g. What does g tell me to do? 3 times something. What's my something? The 2x minus 1 that I'm plugging in. How do we do 3 times 2x minus 1? Distribute. You distribute, which gives me 6x minus 3. Okay? They take practice, okay? You may need to come back on Monday with questions. We'll see. But we've got to keep working on these. Now, the bottom half of this page, in all honesty, is pretty much still doing the same thing. So if you're thinking, man, I want a little more practice, you're going to get it, okay? So function composition. A composite function is the result of applying the rule of one function f to the rule of another function g. The new rule is denoted as f composed with g. That circle there, it's not a multiplication circle. You'll notice it's a hollow circle, an open circle. It is a what we call composition circle, and it's f composed with g. I often call it fog. Okay, you'll hear math teachers refer to it as fog. The fog outside finally cleared, but now we get the fog here. Okay, so the idea though is f composed with g of x is equivalent to f of g of x. Isn't that what we we're just doing? That's f of g of x means we're going to put g into f. If it's reversed, g composed with f, you'll sometimes hear me refer to this as goth. Okay. G composed with f of x is going to be interpreted as g of f of x, meaning you're going to take f and put it into g. Okay, so this is function composition. We were basically doing that up here. It just wasn't written with the composition circle. Okay, so this right, these two pieces right here are going to be important to understand. And it could be done with other var variables too. G and f are common functions. H could be a function, okay? You could have H composed with G and have hog, you know? So, with that in mind, let's try some of these. We're obviously not going to get to all of them, but in all honesty, it's a lot like what we were just doing on the top side. So, let's try A. 
Let f of x be defined as the square root of x plus 7. g of x is defined as 2x minus 5. 5. Find f composed with g of x, so what I call fog, and g composed with f of x, what I call goth. Fog and goth are not official math. It's, you know, but you might remember it. So first thing I'm going to do, they want us to find f composed with g of x. First thing I'm going to do is rewrite that. f composed with g of x means we're doing f of g of x. Composition circle, it's a math thing you need to be familiar with. Now, here's the deal, though. Now that I've written it like this, are we doing what we just did on the top section? Yeah. So if you hadn't quite caught on to the top section, here we go again. Okay? So f of g of x means I'm going to take g and put it into f, yes? So what is g? 2x minus 5. And I don't know if you need to see this visual right here or not. We're going to do, I just replaced g of x with 2x minus 5. So 2x minus 5 is going into f. What does the f rule say? Square root of x plus 7. So square root of something plus 7. What is something? It's this right here, isn't it? It's the 2x minus 5. All you have to do is clean it up. Under that radical, what can we do? Minus 5 plus 7 is going to be 2. And so this is the square root of 2x plus 2. And you're done right there. Okay, that's F composed with G of X. That's fog. Now reverse it. They're asking us also to find G composed with F of X. Which G composed with F of X is G of F of X. You just keep them in the same order. Whatever order they give you, keep them in that same order. G of f of x means I'm going to put f into g. Well, what is f? That is the square root of x plus 7. Square root of x plus 7 it goes into g. What's the rule for g? 2 times something minus 5. What's my input? Square root of x plus 7, my something. Okay. So we're going to take this square root of x plus 7 and put it in. What's this clean up? Two times square root of x plus seven is two square root of x plus seven minus five stays minus five. Now let's skip down. So B is doing a similar thing. You can always check your answers against my answers. I have my answer key here. I'm gonna jump down to C. Why am I jumping to C for a moment? They're numbers. And we're almost out of time, yes. But, hello, this we, we're getting a lot of practice. Okay, so, C. Go of 5, I don't know how you say G composed with H, but... Ga. Ga? Okay, so. G composed with H of 5. When I rewrite that, what does that mean? G of H of 5. Okay, g of h of 5. What do we start by doing? 
H of 5. How do we do H of 5? H says to do X plus 1. What am I putting in for X? 5. So we're doing 5 plus 1. What is 5 plus 1? There's the 6. Now, now we're at G of 6. Where does that 6 go? Goes into G. G says to do something cubed. What am I cubing? 6. 6 cubed is? 216. Thank you. Save my brain from coming up with it. Okay. Hog of negative 3? Or, appropriately said, H of... Oh, wait, I got to... Okay, so H composed with G at negative 3 is officially H of G of negative 3. Well, how do I do G of negative 3? Into G, I'm doing whatever G tells me, which is to cube something. So negative 3 cubed. Negative 27? H of negative 27. Where does this negative 27 go? What's H tell me to do? X plus 1. So it says take this value and add 1. Negative 27 plus 1 is? Negative 26. You like the numbers? Okay. Well, you'll see both. You have to be able to plug numbers in. You have to be able to plug variables. Work with the variables. Okay. If you want to check, if you work some of the others, you want to check your answers against mine, I have them here for you. You're welcome to check. 5-5. Um, five, five. It's available in Savas. It should have a due date of Monday. Okay. So be working on that. Be getting that done. If you didn't get 5-4 done, which there's a handful of you that did not, get that done. Now these fans should finish before the bell. But I also skipped two.